got this, right? Okay. Strong PRV equals strong recruiting. Weak PRV equals nothing. No, no, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Strong PRV equals strong recruiting. Weak PRV equals weak, weak, weak recruiting. recruiting. Look at all your sensei sisters and misters helping you. We did it great. Yes. You, if I had a fortune cookie, it would be your sister. Um, it's okay, she said. <laughs> okay, so, but that is a truth. I look at, I go back in my reports, and I see that when my recruiting was really high, it's because a few months prior, my sales had been really high. So, today, if you promise to write fast, we are going to go through 30. PRV boosters, these are not found online anywhere because I made them up in my head. They, I have a 30 PRV boosters a document online that many of you guys have printed off and hopefully use maybe. Um, but this is new and approved. Okay, so we're going to go through them quickly. I'll expound on some and then I'll send you to Pinterest for some. Is that okay? We all okay with that? Okay. <laughs> Number one, messenger party. Many of you guys do this, some of you have watched my YouTube videos on it, but I just want to tell you that it is absolutely game changing. I'm going to expound just a little bit. You, message five, and I say five for a reason, message five of your best customers, a simple message, text, or Facebook message and say, hey, I'm having a flash sale within Scotch products this Friday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Do you want in? That's all you say. Don't word vomit on them. Less is more. They will be hooked. They will say yes. You don't have to say more and say more. Yes, ma'am? Okay, so you're going to send them a message, a text message. I recommend five, no more than five. You're going to tell them, I am having a flash sale this Friday night from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Do you want in? I've never been turned down. I've never been told no, ever, okay? And then that's when you tell them the details and you say to them, oh my gosh, you are in for a treat. Here's how it works. And then you just simply tell them, you gotta be quiet. This is a group message. It's gonna run fast. First come, first serve. I'm gonna post a product, tell you how much it is and how many I have. If you want it, you simply say, I want, and, and you claim it. And I don't allow anybody to do any kind of small chat. I, somebody might say, oh, that warmer's so pretty. Delete. Do you want to buy it or do you not? I mean, let's do this, right? <laughs> because it's a group message and because in the future you're going to want to do more of these. And you've got to do it right so that they'll want to participate and even help you with referrals for your next one. Okay, so this is what I do. I go through my home. I find any inventory that maybe I've had on hand, um, maybe things that I've gotten from a fundraiser, um, just things that I'm ready to sell. I do not use stock images. I'm not a fan of just randomly Googling for a picture of the warmer or whatever. I actually take pictures of my products, my hands, my face, my sink, okay? And um, I get those pictures ready beforehand. I also figure out what I want to sell them for. Remember, this is within compliance because it is a group message, okay? And then I will post a picture. I try to do 10, 10 deals. Um, I don't do 20 or 30 or whatever because, you know, I can do another flash sale with five other customers two or three days later if I want to, right? So you... We'll post, a, or I usually give them um, like a 30 minute heads up. I'll be like, 30 minutes, it's going down. Are you ready? Make sure you're logged into PayPal. And then I tell them again how it's going to work. I'm going to post the picture, the quantity I have in stock, and how much it is. You simply underneath the picture say, I want however many. I'm going to send you a PayPal link, private message to you. and. Whoever pays the fastest is who gets it. This is why I recommend only beginning with five. Because I'm telling you, when I do these flash sales, I'm running around like a crazy person. I have a master list of who I invited to the flash sale, who actually paid for it, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So then um, after the flash sale, 
I just, you know, like during the flash sale, I'm, I'm messaging them, okay, I, I, I post the picture of four clean breeze bars. I say I want, you know, $6 a piece for them. Um, and then when people post, or I usually include tax, so it would be like, you know, 648 or whatever your tax is, I don't even know. But anyway, and then I'll message them privately and I'll say, okay, here's your PayPal link. And I use paypal.me. Um, it's real easy. I have an iPhone, so I have short, uh, text shortcuts where I just type PP and then it, it auto populates the entire PayPal link. And then I just real quick drop the number of their the price of what they're buying. They're buying the products as we go so that I know that everything's sold out before we move to the next thing. Um, if I see that something's not going like Midnight Fig, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 20 bars of Midnight Fig, and uh, yeah, so if I see that whatever I put in this chat isn't going over well, people aren't getting excited, they're not claiming it, then I do move, move on, and at the end of the flash sale, I'll say, okay, here's what is left unclaimed or unpaid for, still available, first come, first serve, let me know privately, and then... I, I ask them not to post in the group chat again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'll, you, my average is seven, $800. I've sold as much as 1500 in a 30 minute flash sale. Just, in fact, it does so well that now I've begun, I've begun placing orders ahead of time like you would a festival in anticipation for my next flash sale because <coughs> I know it's gonna sell. You can do videos. Uh, right before Christmas, I decided, you know what? Come out with warmers. They still want warmers, and I don't have any. I don't have any Christmas warmers in stock. So you know what I did? I went to my Scentsy cabinet where all my vintage Scentsy warmers are, and I was like, "Bye." <laughs> Bye. <laughs> they, I mean, like they were hungry for that Scentsy, and they wanted it. And so I cleaned them up. I did a Facebook um, uh, in the messenger. I did the video. I went all the way around the warmer, and I said, "This is a demo warmer. It has been used before." It is still lifetime warranty. It still has a lifetime warranty. This is how much I want for it, and I only have one. Sold every single one. People saying, if you find anything else, let me know. I'm, I'm telling you, this works, but it's all about how you market it. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, are we still on number one? Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on, number two. When you set a goal to sell six packs, please don't use the overused verbiage of my director has challenged me to sell six six packs before. No, no, no. You own it, girl, and you own it, guy, and you get on there and you create your own magic. Does that make sense? Don't wake up and wait for inspiration to find you. You wake up and find it yourself. Here's what I recommend doing. I think it's the most fun ever, and it has gone over so well with my customers. I love to do it this or that. So I say... And I make these up on my own, but if you're not super creative, get on Pinterest. You can find amazing things on there. Get with your superstar director. They've got amazing ideas as well. <coughs> so what I do is I love doing like, um, say, a six-pack called Mountain Retreat. And then a six-pack called Seaside Spa. I just make these up on my own. And then it's called This or That. And I'll post on my VIP page, and I'll say, okay, vacation destination, you pick where you want to go. And because I market it like that, instead of saying, my director challenged me to sell sick. No, they don't, they, they helped you out enough, honey. Let's help them. And they, people love giving their opinions and they love talking about themselves. And so they'll say, oh my gosh, you got me, Laura. Mountain retreat sounds amazing, but I want my house to smell like a seaside spot. And it creates a lot of um, different you know, interaction between my customers. Um, and so I challenge you to do with this or that thing. Have some fun with it. Number three. If you're struggling to have parties, I know exactly why. It's because you use the P word. That's awful. Don't mm -hmm. use that P word. It's offensive. Okay? I challenge you to have a spa night. And if you can't book a spa night, it's probably because you've not done one yourself and invited enough people to it. Because when people experience a spa night, they'll book one if you do it right. You have a spa night at your house. You do not say Scentsy on the invitation. You do not say Scentsy anywhere. And they come into a spa night expecting to just have so much fun with girls, and, and that is what you're going to have. You're going to have the lights low, the music on. If you're a wine drinker, you might consider having wine. 
You're going to have nice warm bowls of Scentsy Soap ready for their tired feet. You're going to teach them how to make sugar scrub. It's so cheap and easy to make. They're going to use the sugar scrub at the spa night, and then you're actually going to have a little container for them to take some of their own sugar scrub home that they made. You're going to have the, a blast. You're going to have a table set up with maybe some special, just cute little packages already made up of diff different Scentsy products that would make a good bundle. And you're going to have an exclusive spa night, exclusive price just for those there. And I'm telling you, it goes over like a dream, and you will have people book right then and right there. Um, game night is also another big favorite of mine. Um, game night, I don't call it bingo night every time because um, sometimes bingo, not every circle of friends and family love bingo and so I consider calling it a game night and be willing to kind of pull your audience before they come to see if bingo is actually what they want to play. It may be bunko, okay? So have a sensey game night. If you do this right, people will ask you to host a game night twice a month, okay? Moving on, number four. Um, I'm going to go through this quickly. When you have a, a bundle and save, we always teach everybody to upsell to the, the next higher bundle and save. But I actually want to take it a step further. I want you to get creative. We're boosting PRV. We're not just sliding by, right? These are boosters. So when someone says to you, oh my gosh, you know, I need to get this nightlight warmer and these three bars for mom's birthday. And then that's when you say, not, oh, but I have a bundle and say, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. No, 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 not now. <laughs> what you say is, but Julie, didn't you know this is my 10 years since anniversary month and I'm doing a drawing for everybody that gets to $50? Girl, you're $2 away. Oh, I am? And then she says, oh, oh, okay. Um, and I say, but, and I can do something really awesome. I can add another nightlight warmer and three more bars for just 18 or whatever. I, I'm making up numbers, but you know. And, and I give her that. And she's like, yeah, get me in. What got her excited? It was the drawing. They do it almost every single time. Have something fun going on for your customers so that that is what you, you use to upsell, not just the financial benefit of it. Trust me. This works. Try it. Number five, pick two days out of every single month that you consider your clearance tab. Oh, I forgot what I call it. Clearance tab. Oh. Emphasis. Thank you. <laughs> clearance. And you can tell that um, this isn't always original with my director's job. Okay. Thank you. Clearance tab emphasis. So um, when you get your new calendar for the year, go through and pick a Thursday and a Friday every single month. One Thursday, one Friday together, a combo day. And um, that's going to be your clearance tab emphasis month. What I found is in 10 years of Sensi, honest to God, that is the most underutilized tool. And it's just missed opportunity, guys. And so I highlight those two days. I pick Thursday because I need to catch them before they know what they're going to do with their paycheck the next day. I pick Friday because I need to get them before they go to Target. Okay? So um, Thursday and Friday are my clearance emphasis days. I just try to build, you know, like, it, I just try to give a lot of attention to the clearance, um, and then I usually will do something to where, you know, if they spend $50 in my clearance tab, I might, you know, send them a special happy mail. It's stuff I'm going to send anyway. It's just all in how you market it. Um, moving on, number six. Oh, this is really fun. Do a poll, and here's how you word it very carefully so that you're within compliance but still getting the job done. There's something about the power of suggestion. I hope you're using this. So your customers love to have a voice just like you like to have a voice with the home office, right? And so what I love to do is I love to create a poll in my VIP page and I'll say, um, I'm trying to figure out whether to make samples. Okay, I'm, try I'm making samples for my customers that order in March. But I cannot decide between the new multi-purpose, uh, ultra-concentrated, new fancy pants thing. What is this called, guys? The new stuff? <laughs> all-purpose cleaner. I can't decide on whether making samples of the new all-purpose cleaner or of the uh, Blue Grotto counter clean. I'm making up stuff. You guys just go with it, right? You know, like, an and what I find is it does a couple of things. It not only makes people feel like, wow, Laura's letting us in. She's really wanting our feedback. But it also subliminally lets them know, wow, I need to order in March. This is going to be good. Because you know what everybody's going to pick. Now, here's what they don't know. 
already made up in my back cupboard our 75 ultra whatever concentrated all-purpose cleaner samples I've already decided what I'm gonna do um, I also personally reach out say I have a good customer that man she's been such a supporter of my business but she's not ordered in the last two months she's the one that I privately message and I say Nicole I need your help I'm trying to make samples up I'm not 100% sure which way to go. These are my two options. What do you think would go over well? I mean, she's one of my customers. You know what I'm saying? And they always respond. People come to me and they say, Laura, I text my customers, but they don't respond. And I'll say, send me a screenshot of the last three texts that you've sent out that nobody's responded to. And it is boring as heck. So boring. I wouldn't respond either. I mean, just being honest. You gotta get your customers excited about having an input or a voice into what you're doing. Oh gosh, are we on number seven? Post of the month club, oh gosh, just go to the training center on this one. There's so many different fun ways to make host of the month club really rock your PRB. Number eight, provide off to college ideas, pre-made packages up of since he goes and some fun things that make them think of home, maybe mom's favorite scent that she always had going in the house. That goes over really well. Number nine, be your own best customer. I think we understand the importance of this. You can't sell what you don't use. Ooh, I love number 10. Okay, so some days I just wake up and I'm like, you know what, today's gonna be a 200 PRV day. Yep, don't have a clue how I'm gonna get there. And I realized that the first two ideas that I work with probably may not get me to 200, so I know that I may need to try several different approaches to get to 200 by midnight. But I just wake up and I set a goal. Sometimes it's more than 200. But here's what I found that works. I could post on Facebook, like some of us do, that you know generic, I need to sell 200 to reach my goal and all that, and that's fine if you use it once a year. But if you have already used that in the last 12 months, then maybe you could try this. Maybe you can message four different people, and you could use their name when you text them, please. And you could say, hey, little Debbie, I really need to sell five counter clean before 8 p.m. tonight. Just wanted to reach out to you first. I'll leave it at that. And I tell you what, almost every single time, whether it's counter clean, whether it's hand soap, whether whatever it is, I almost always get a text back that says, put me down for two and hold on, I'm gonna ask around here at work. Put me down for two, but wait, I'm gonna text mama. Mama? Mama's never bought from me. I've never sent mama a sample. Why she ordered from me? How did that work out? <coughs> oh, yeah, I did that, right? <laughs> you know, claim it. And you send this out to four different people. Okay, you really want to be gutsy? Send it out to eight. And here's what you're doing. You're growing your PRB long term because you're growing your customer base, right? People want to help. You notice I didn't bribe her with some kind of free shipping if you buy three or more. You can do that if you feel like you need to. You'd be surprised. Your customers want to help. They want to get in on this journey. They want to feel good about being part of your sense of journey. Let them in, okay? All right, number 11. Um, change the way you purchase for personal use. I kind of covered that in one of the previous numbers, so we're, we're going to move on to number 12 because I, I want to tell you about a last chance first glance party. Have you ever heard of that? Okay, so now's the time to book it. you got to do it now. Last chance, all the February sales stuff, all the discontinued stuff, first glance. Do it late enough this month that you can take orders for your March things and not hold their payment for more than three or four business days, okay? That is a state and local law, to not hold their payment for more than three, four business days, I think it is, okay? Um, have a yard sale, Ooh, You know the messenger party idea, right? Just go through your house and like use a rake if you have to. Just get all the sensey stuff that hasn't sold or that you try to cube out of it and you didn't like it, you know, just rake it all up. Now, mind the compliance rules about yard sales. Make sure all of your, your um, Scentsy is confined to one table at your yard sale. Um, beware or mind the signage rules and all that kind of stuff. It's super easy, um, but, but have a yard sale. It's awesome. I know people that have Scentsy yard sales. They sell $1,000, $1,200. 
They set up on Saturday morning from 8 to 5 to 8 to noon. And it does so well that one of the girls that I mentored, she took this idea and ran with it. And you know what she did? She's so smart. She was like, dang, my sister lives in a really fancy pants neighborhood. I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna go over there. She did it and she sold again the very next weekend and sold so much she was taking orders. <laughs> So think about, maybe not where you live, but think about the opportunities of people that you know and be willing to maybe give them 10% since you let, since they let everybody walk all over their grass, right? You know, like be willing to, to be mindful of that. Um, you didn't have a booth fee, so why not be a little generous with, you know, your products for the, the people that let you be there? Um, number 13, brand yourself. I think this is pretty common knowledge, but make sure every day. Number 14, oh, I love this one, 14, give two people one catalog and order forms. Tell each one that if she just gets to $100 in sales, that you'll give her a half price warmer of her choice. Check on her three hours later. If she's like my customers, she's going to be at 100 or over, and you're going to act surprised every time, like even 80 times into it. You're going to go like, what? <laughs> You have $125 and I gave these catalogs to you three hours ago? Girl, let me tell you what's in it for you if you get to 200. Like I'm already hitting them up for 200 and many times they already get over 200 and then I'm like, let me tell you what happens at the $500 mark. You know what I'm saying? But you started it with a 100 low minimum and then these are the perfect candidates for you to have a join conversation with because it blew their mind how easily it was to. Okay, am I going at a nice speed? Everybody's pen smoking? <coughs> okay, number 15, pick up the phone and let me just help you out with this. I don't like to talk on the phone either, I dread it. Um, I hate it very, very much. Um, but here's what I found is that there's something very power powerful about hearing your Scentsy Girl's voice and they hate talking on the phone too. So here's how my um, voice messages go. They're not gonna pick up, they never pick up. And then you're gonna, and you're gonna be like, I can do this, right? And so I just leave them a simple message. I'm like, Margaret, it's your Scentsy girl. How are you? I hope you're doing good. I know you're busy. Just send me a text whenever you get this. I have something important to tell you. The end. That wasn't so painful, right? You can also do this by uh, voice messenger on Messenger, voice message on Messenger. Yeah, so you just hold down that button. I'm telling you, there's something powerful that they connect with when they hear your voice. Use it, it's a tool. Are we on 16? Okay, I'm taking that we are. So themed grab bags, um, you guys use themed bag grabs? I'm uh, sorry, grab bags, <laughs> set it backwards. Not on purpose either. <laughs> Okay, I love theme bag grab. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. Yeah, keep doing it. I try to do cool things like that. It never, it never happens. Okay, yeah. So you can just same thing. Go through your house, find things that maybe haven't sold. I put everything out on my kitchen island, and then I just separate it. I try to make sure that each group of things is worth the same similar value. So let's just go with the thirty dollar mark. So it may take different products. Maybe it's a bar and a counter clean and an oil in this bag. Maybe it's a Scentsy, um, I don't know, a set of Scentsy pods, a rim spray. You know, maybe different things in each stack, but they all get to about $30. Okay, here's what I do. I find the coolest, fanciest gift bags known to man. Very trendy because in this situation, bags are going to be what sells it. Okay? And then I take that $30 value mark and I add $8 shipping. Am I gonna charge them for the shipping? Probably not, especially if they're local. Am I going, did I pay $8 shipping on it? No, but would they have to pay $8 if they went to my website to order those very same things? Yes, so add it to the value. Also add tax. And this is tricky, follow me here. I'm not gonna lead you away from compliance. But add the value of the samples that you put in there to spruce it up. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, you're going to probably come across something like $42. It's usually like $42 or $45. So you're going to say, 
um, through message or however you want to do it, you're going to say, oh my gosh, I had five grab bags valued at $42.50, but you only pay $30 for them. Do you understand that there's $30 worth of full size Scentsy products in the bags, but I use the power of suggestion with the value to make it just wow them. Who wouldn't want that, right? So here we go. The bags are not just bags. They are the coolest bags ever. There's signs on them. I'll name one unicorn farts. I'll name the other one crazy cat lady. I'll name the other one wine for supper or something like that. Be fun. Nobody wants to do business with the boring Scentsy girl. They want to have fun. And I'll tell you, if you do this right, my customers get crazy excited about this. Now I don't even have to tell them a price. I mean, I tell them a price through Messenger, but I just post a picture of five bags on my VIP page with these crazy names on it, and they're like, that's all I do. I don't even put anything in it, and they're like, um, I want the crazy cat bag lady um, one. Uh, message me the information. I'm like, okay, that's cool, and then I'll have messages going, she already took the wine for supper one. Can I get the next one the next time you do it? Sure, or I'll get... Um, I'm not a crazy cat lady. Do you have a crazy dog lady one? I'm like, well, I can make you one, sister. That's fine. So just have fun with the grab bags. It is so good. Be generous. If you do it right, you'll not have to promote yourself as hard the second and the third and the fourth go around because you did it right the first time. Give more than you take. Number 18. I mentor so many people that reach out to me. They're exhausted. <coughs> exhausted because they've been trying to find new customers on their own. Why do you do that? Ask for referrals. Your, your customers want to help you grow. Do you know how many times I get on my VIP page and I'll be like, dang, we have nobody in here from Maine. Who has a customer in Maine? Or who knows anybody in Maine that loves Cincy? They want to help you out. Um, I will always reward a referral, but sometimes I don't re let them know what, I mean, hardly, honestly, ever do I let them know what the referral special is before they refer the customer to me. They just want to get in on what I'm doing. They love me. They want to do life with me, and they want to know that they're part of something bigger than them, right? So um, I usually do 20% of the order, just letting you know. Um, like, say, Susie refers Mary Kay. Mary Kay's um, order was, I'm bad at math, $100. So Susie's going to get a coupon in the mail that says this is good for $20 on your next Scentsy order of 35 or more. Why 35 Because I want her to get more than a six-pack of wax, y'all, right? Okay. So, um, and then say the referral doesn't order. They get a consolation. Is that the right way to say it? Consolation prize of a scent circle or whatever it is that I decide to do for that month. Number 19, be ready. How many times do you pass out a sample and someone says to you, do you have any light bulbs on hand? <clears throat> have a mobile office. There have been many times where I've given a sample to the waitress at a restaurant and she say, you don't happen to have any of that wax on hand, do you? We all buy that stuff and we are deader than dead after 1.30. You want to come back up here at 1.30? I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. All right, so number 19 is mail past customers a scent of the month flyer with a scent sample. And I do have a tip on this. Um, I think we all are familiar with this challenge. But I want to say a little phrase that maybe I should use, maybe I shouldn't use. But i got to tell you, as your big Scentsy sister, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Sometimes when I see some of the samples you guys are handing out, I'm like, what in the world? So here's what I do. I mail samples that are the size of two Tic Tacs glued together, if you get that idea. And it, I, I try to make it to where they can only smell the sample if they're this close to the warmer. Why? Because of the power of FOMO, fear of missing out. And they're like, man, that's so good, this close? I wonder what it would smell like if I had a real cube of it. And then they order. I've given away the big samples and honestly, I did not see as much of an excitement about reordering. I'm just telling you the truth. And, and it's much better, especially depending on where you are in your Scentsy journey. It helps with the budget too, doesn't it? Okay? So less is more. And I'm telling you that out of the, honestly, 
the depths of my heart. I, I, we all live by the give more than you take rule, but I'm telling you, marketing-wise, be smart. Less is more. Okay. Are we on? <coughs> You're my new best friend. I need you to go everywhere with me. <laughs> okay, 21. We're handing out samples everywhere we go. Did I already say that? Number 22. Label, label, label. I got a really fantastic idea from Melissa Gratz. And um, it's a love brag tag. And I gotta tell you, when I first got this idea, I thought that I had to bribe my customers to tag me on Facebook. I thought I had to say, you'll be entered into a drawing if you post a picture of your Scentsy products and tag me on Facebook. You'll be entered into a drawing. Honestly, I redid that two years ago. I redid my postcards. I left that step out. So step one on my postcard says, get your order in and get ready. Number two says, Take a moment of silence and smell it all. It's going to be great. Number three, I'm making this up because I don't have one in front of me. But number three, take a picture of it. Number four, post it on social media and tag me. No drawing. Do you know I have more people today tagging me on Facebook over there, Scentsy Goodies, than I ever have? And I'm not bragging them. I'm telling you, when you make personal connections with your customers, they want to help you. They want to be part of it. Okay? All right, number 23, have a host appreciation event. It could be at your home or it could be virtually. And if you do this right, it's all about marketing yourself. If you do this right, you're going to make every single person that hears about this super jelly that they've not been one of your hostesses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, of course, mind compliance and make sure that everything you do is absolutely within compliance. But I'll tell you, most of my hostesses are a product of another hostess bragging on what she got as a result of doing a party for me. So just let that sink in and let that be your motivation on what you should do to make a host appreciation event really work. Okay? Number 24. I'm not going to go into detail about some of these because, as I mentioned, the training center is a powerful tool. Pinterest rocks too, right? Mystery host party. I want you to look this up. I have a YouTube video on it um, on my YouTube channel. Um, and there's so much information about this. So many different, cool, different ways to do it. Mystery host party. 25, talk to brides right now. Okay, so these summer weddings, so many of us, we wake up in May and we're like, how to get PRV? I'm gonna talk to brides. Too late. <laughs> They were in March and, and even February, they were deciding what they were going to give away as gifts. They were deciding what they were going to fragrance their reception with, okay? So get with them now. Don't wait until they've already decided. Um, number 26, subscribe to the warmer of the month. We're talking about PRB boosters, you guys. That's a quick PRB booster. Set up Scentsy Club for yourself. We just left a training about Sensi Club, right? Number 27, sign up for a small vendor fair. Number 28, ooh, I love this one. Contact local businesses with lots of employees for a, in a small location. Here's some ideas. Real estate offices, dental offices, medical practices, schools, Ask if you can set up a small display for their employees one day. Offer them the host rewards. Offer them something free for their offices or their bathroom. Number 29. Create a system for follow-up. Oh, hello, Maven. I'm not going to beat a dead horse there. You guys that presented in that did such a fantastic job. Um, if you do your follow-up right, you will have an effortless... 500 PRB at least average without e even any effort at all. I'm going to get to 500 or even sometimes seven and eight hundred dollars without any effort at all just because I've got a consistent follow up system in place. Number 30, this is the final one. Make a flyer to suggest gifts. So many of our customers are not using Scentsy as gifts. You need to be um, the one to make that suggestion. Pictures, uh, promotions, however you want to do it. So um, what did you think of those 30? Did you find some that...
Okay, I want you, before you put your pens up, we've got just a bit of time left. I want you to go back and I want you to circle or highlight the, the two that made your heart beat that you could see yourself doing, two of them. Do you know that most of these are things that you could accomplish in one day? If you work the Cincy business five days a week, what in the world could you do in a four week time frame with these 30 tips? What could you do with two? Okay, so I recently started running. How many of you guys follow me on Instagram or Facebook? It's been a journey. I'm three weeks into it, and I still hate it, just in case you were wondering. Like, oh, I hate it so bad. Um, so I, I love to CrossFit. I, I'm an Olympic lifter. I always joke about that. It's not really that fancy. But anyway, I love to lift weights. It's my passion. I see cardio on the workout of the day, and I'm like, run, but not that kind of run, like run back home, go away. I don't like cardio. And so um, what I've really found for me is that I'm not, a, I wasn't afraid to set the goal of running. I knew why I was doing it. I feared running for so long. I'm tired of being afraid of running. I'm also finding that as I lift weights, I'm getting bulky, like I'm building muscle, but I, my clothes aren't fitting. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to run. And I, I know all the reasons why I should run. That wasn't hard for me to decide I need to run. I'm not afraid, honestly, of knowing that every day I have to run either. So that was the number two fear, you know? What bothers me is when I go running all of the things that happen. <coughs> the rain. I had a cold, and I honestly had so many Kleenexes in my hoodie that it was disgusting. I mean, it, it was so bad, and here's even worse, as my nose was running, and I'm running in 26 degree weather, and I have a cold, and I'm hating running so bad that I know that if I stop and blow my nose, I'll probably just stop completely. So I'm blowing my nose as I'm running, and it's just dreadful, and you guys aren't even nearly acting like this is as painful as what it is. <laughs> it's awful. Shit splints. Who has those? No runners in here, right? No, yeah, you feel my pain. Shin splints, I have shin splints really bad. Um, what's something else? The rain, the 26 degree temperature. Oh, headache. I get headaches really bad, and sometimes I've run, decided to run with a headache. So here's what gets me. If I wake up in the morning, I know that running is going to be what I do before I eat, before I do anything, um, and here I go, thinking about all the miserable things I'm going to have to go through as I run, and I will almost shut down on my goal. 